Okay, what we're going to do in this video is talk about lowering pH in your aquarium. And we're going to go over some of the different methods used for doing that. Uh, but first, let me take a moment out to show you my personal aquarium. Let me just grab the, the camera. Okay, and what we had in mind with this one is kind of making this one a double view. This is the aquarium when you first enter my house. And then when we walk over into my living room, we actually have a view of the other side. And this is why the aquarium has no background. Okay, so now getting into the different methods used for lowering pH. Well, let me start off with the one method that I really don't like and I recommend that everybody stay away from this one. And that is using these type of products. Um, this one's made by Top Fin, but every brand has their own. And this is basically what you buy at the pet store called pH Down. And the reason why I don't like these is one, a lot of the times they really don't work. If your KH is high or if you don't have inert gravel, then eventually they're just going to bring the pH levels back up. Not to mention these can be, be very harmful towards the fish. Um, they're not a natural product, uh, and so we don't recommend them for that, for those reasons. Now, let's get into the ones that actually do work. <laughs> Starting off with um, the almond leaves. Now, these work great. Um, they're very natural. Um, the only thing we don't like about these is that they do change the color of the water. They make the color of the water kind of like a tea color and it can be a little difficult to get rid of. Another thing is about these is you want to make sure that they're organic and they haven't been sprayed with pesticides because if they have then you're actually kind of putting those pesticides in your aquarium and of course we don't want to do that. Now let me move on to the next one. Uh, peat or peat moss there's several different versions uh, this one here is made by Fluvile, and this one is kind of along the line as the leaves. It changes the color of the water, not quite like a tea, a little bit different, um, but it's the same, the same principle. We want to keep the water nice and clear. However, this does work great. It did lower the pH, and it's natural, so it's a very good method of lowering pH. Uh, now, for the next one I'm going to talk about, I don't have an example here with me, but that is driftwood. Um, I don't know where my driftwood is, but one of the things we don't like about driftwood is it can be difficult to figure out exactly how much you need. It's not always based off of how big your aquarium is, but also how high the KH is and how high the pH is. Uh, another problem with driftwood is it can be difficult to find a nice, attractive piece for your aquarium. But the biggest problem we have with driftwood is that you're limited to how you decorate the aquarium. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing it natural. We used to have this one set up all natural gravel and driftwood and plants, and it, it looks beautiful. But we like having the option of changing it. Uh, we, let to, we let the kids come over and they get to pick out whatever they want and so on. Um, because of that, we really didn't want to keep the driftwood. So we went looking into other options. Uh, which led us to the next one, which is RO water or reverse osmosis water. Now, if you're going to do RO water on your aquarium, uh, first thing you need to do is to buy a filter. This is the RO Buddy. They only run about $50 on Amazon, and these work great. They're easy to install, they come with everything that you need, and also we use this. And this is Kent RO, right? And what this does is it's the minerals you need. I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up, but basically what it's showing there is how much to pour in the RO water 
to give you the pH levels, KH levels that you need. And it even gives you a guide of the type of fish um, that requires certain pH levels. So let me talk a little bit more about how RO water works. Um, with moss and the almond leaves, basically what you're doing is you're suppressing the hardness of the water or the pH. So everything that makes everything that makes the hardness high and the pH high is still there. It's just being suppressed by these. And we know this because if you remove these and actually the pH levels go right back up. On reverse osmosis water, what you're doing is you're actually removing everything. You're removing the good and the bad. And then the idea is to add in only the good. Um, so that's the pros. The cons are it can be very difficult, especially in the initial setup. On RO water, you absolutely have to have inert gravel. And I have another video that talks more about inert gravel if you'd like to check that out. But if you don't have inert gravel, then eventually the gravel is going to raise the pH levels of the RO water and you would have done all that work for nothing. So you absolutely have to have inert gravel. Then you have to get all the RO water you, you need for the aquarium. Now this one here only does about five gallons per hour. So whenever we do the water changes, we just set aside tubs of water and we do that the day before the water change so it'll be ready. But doing the initial setup for this tank, we actually had to find a water store, confirm that it was RO water that they had, and we had to make several trips all day long until this aquarium was set up. So that, that's kind of the pros and cons uh, about doing that. I will put the links to the RO Buddy and um, the Kent Marine the Kent RO right, and I'll also put a link to some inert gravel in case you're curious and would like to check that out. Okay, I, I hope you guys found this video educational, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you for watching.